Pokemon Go is dead. Or is it? This is a game that has surged in popularity for over seven years, with one of the largest and most dedicated player bases in mobile gaming history. But if you've been playing recently, you might have noticed that things don't feel quite right. Something's off. Pokemon Go has lost something important, and today we talk about what that is and why it feels so dead. Try to think of the last time that you really loved grinding Pokemon Go. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, dude. I like, it's just gonna be a good day. I mean playing as many hours per day with clear goals and incentives. Was it in 2016 when the game first came out and everything was super new and exciting? Maybe in 2017 when Generation 2 was released into the wild and there were tons of new Pokemon to catch. Or when shiny Pokemon started getting released for the first time. Or raids, or legendaries, or PvP. Or maybe during the huge popularity resurgence during the pandemic. Whenever it was, you were probably excited to grind a specific part of the game. To build your shiny collection, or find meta-relevant Pokemon to battle with, use a new and fun feature, there was a reason for you to get on and grind, something to play for. Which brings us to one of our biggest current issues with Pokemon Go. Nothing to grind for. Every era that Pokemon Go has been popular has been due to something new or fun that got players excited to grind. At first it was Pokemon in general back in 2016, then it was big rare spawns like Dragonite, Gyarados, and Lapras, then shiny Pokemon absolutely took over, and more recently, meta relevant and rare Pokemon that were useful and also extremely cool. Now it's no secret that Pokemon Go in 2020 and 2021 is the most exciting it's been in years, mainly due to remote raids. Raids featured really exciting exciting and useful Pokemon that were worth grinding for, either because they were relevant or super rare. But since remote raids were nerfed into oblivion, with the prices doubling and the limit being set to 5 per day, people don't really use the feature as much anymore. So the most recent, most exciting feature that everybody was hopping online to grind and play was effectively killed by the developers of the game in a recent update. And this has had a huge landslide effect on Pokemon Go. Many people recently were focused on grinding meta-relevant Pokemon. Why? To build strong teams to use in raid battles to battle stronger Pokemon and get more strong Pokemon in their team. It was like that awesome feedback loop of like grind, grind, more, more. So when raids were killed, people's motivation to find good Pokemon died too, which included Pokemon in the wild, in field research, in the eggs. The whole concept of catching Pokemon got significantly less interesting because the main motivator behind it was no longer there. Now obviously PvP still exists and plenty of people hunt rare Pokemon for that, but most people don't PvP, so grinding meta-relevant Pokemon meant grinding them to use in the raids. And now, the only reason to grind good Pokemon is for PvP, which is a feature that, again, most people don't use or find super engaging. So now, many players are just kind of sitting and waiting for the next big fun thing to come and grind. Which leads us to our next problem. New features suck. When raids were nerfed, Pokemon Go promised we would have a year full of new features, really, really exciting things to do, and stuff to keep players interested. So far, we've gotten routes, showcases, shadow raids, and the party up feature. Let's examine these. Party up. This is the newest feature meant to make it fun to team up with your friends and go out and play Pokemon Go. Cool concept, right? Get the squad together, go around, get a bunch of bonuses, help each other out. But in reality, the feature's not really great. With the main problem being what we previously talked about, no real reason to grind. The rewards are terrible and the feature is kind of just buggy, passive, and uninteresting. There's no incentive and it's not really exciting. It's basically just an extra thing to do in game if you want routes. The feature launch for this was an absolute flop and left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths around it. It basically wasn't ready when it was first released and took a very long time to get out to the rest of the world. Then once it finally got out, the main incentive behind it was also kind of a big flop. Zygarde is a legendary Pokemon you can only get during the routes release and can only evolve by using routes. It's the only real incentive to use this feature, and it's impossible to get and to evolve. The grind for Zygarde cells, the item used to evolve it, is bugged and you literally have to perform a glitch to get them to spawn. It's also the slowest grind in the world. That's kind of boring. You just walk in a straight line. And since it takes so long, most people kind of give up in the first little bit of it. Like you literally have to grind this feature for weeks, months, just to get enough cells to finally complete your one single Zygarde evolution. And it's kind of like, what's the point? Also, the other rewards from using this feature aren't really anything spectacular. And many people don't have routes or just don't use them at all because they're really hard to get in more rural areas and hard to find. It's basically just an extra thing to do in game if you want. Showcases. Now with this, the bonuses are actually pretty decent, and since it's so passive, it's 
nice enough to be able to just grind for passive uh, the, the bonuses. But there's nothing fun about showcases, nothing fun about grinding them. It's a really boring, casual feature that helps give you more items. And it's basically just an extra thing to do in game if you want. You can also tell that they really want to promote these features and get people using them because when you look at their new season announcement, these three features are promoted at the top of the website and advertised as super fun and exciting things to do during the season. When in reality, say it with me, they're just basically an extra thing to do in game if you want. Which is turning into the main trend of new features and the main trend of the game as a whole. It's becoming primarily casual, super passive, and really boring. There's nothing to grind or to be excited about, and the decisions by the developers are supporting that shift. And keep in mind, Niantic is pouring millions and millions of dollars in development power to fuel these new features, and they're doing that instead of fixing other things or working on stuff that's worked in the past. It's like they're desperately searching for the next thing that makes Pokemon Go fun and exciting for people. But each time they come up with something, they miss. Okay, but what about Shadow Raids? Honestly, a really cool feature conceptually. Their new bosses, really meta-relevant, can be shiny and are super rare, but this feature too has kind of underperformed. But Shadow Raids are a flop for a completely different reason, the one that we're looking at next, Pandemic Gameplay. Pokemon Go before and after the pandemic were two completely different games. Before the pandemic, playing Pokemon Go and having fun typically meant living in or nearby a very populated area, like a major city or town with a ton of Pokestops and gyms. It was the reality of the game and most people still had plenty of fun and accepted it. But once the pandemic happened, fundamental changes came to the game that changed it forever. For the first time ever, these updates made the game fun and possible to grind from home. Everyone everywhere could play Pokemon Go and have a super fun time doing it. Remote raids, longer spin distance, and more spawns let people in rural areas, cities, and at home enjoy the game all the same. Being in a populated area became a benefit instead of a necessity, and remote raids let people grind wherever and whenever they wanted. Pokemon Go made massive strides forward in terms of modernizing the game for the masses. They created a new baseline experience that everyone enjoyed, from new players to old. Which is why reverting these changes not only didn't make sense, but was an obviously destructive decision that would set the game back years. Reverting the game to pre-pandemic gameplay was like giving everyone an iPhone 15, then taking it back and giving them an iPhone 10 instead. Same technology, somewhat same device, but huge noticeable downgrades that completely changed the experience. Most people who came back to the game during the pandemic, which was a lot of people, ended up quitting once the changes came into effect. And many players today don't find Pokemon Go as much fun as they did a year or two ago. This was, in my opinion, the single worst decision in Pokemon Go's game history. And going back to the Shadow Raids, since they're in-person only, most people kind of don't do them or use the feature. You can't raid them unless you drive around to find them, you can't invite your friends to help, and the legendary raids are really hard to beat. What's the point of even trying? The pandemic created a massive Pokemon Go global community instead of small, fragmented local communities. Once the pandemic features were reverted, the global community kind of died, which is one of the single largest reasons as to why the game feels so stale right now. But it's not the only reason. Boring events. Recent Pokemon Go events are just not what they used to be. Spawns have been fairly underwhelming. Raids are kind of irrelevant because people don't really do them anymore. Eggs are hard to grind. There's also usually one new Pokemon released every two weeks and maybe one or two shinies released throughout the events. And many of the Pokemon featured in these recent events have been used time and time again in past events and people have already caught them a million times. Events now don't really have anything to grind. They're just kind of a fun thing to do if you want. Also, many recent events have been focused on the new underwhelming features, which is like a double not good sandwich, like the routes and the party up events. Also, costume Pokemon, a once rare and very exciting thing, have completely taken over recent events. They're always now used as that dangly carrot to get players to spend. But like with other aspects of the game, many of the best ones don't really have any grindability. Like the city safari Eevee that only has nine total encounters per day if you want to try to find the shiny. It's just luck based, not grind based. Or the Fashion Week Dragonite that was only available in tier three raids with only five remote raids allowed per day. And many costume Pokemon coming out now are just re-releases of the same costumes that came out years ago, making them less rare. Like with the recent Halloween and fashion events. Why grind costume Pokemon when they just come back every year? Are they really that rare and special? Events used to be something that were too exciting to miss and had aspects that were super fun and worth grinding. But lately they've been missing the magic that they used to have. And there's one common factor between them all. 
Niantic created them. Niantic's decisions. Niantic are the developers of Pokemon Go, and they ultimately decide the direction of the game. This includes new updates, new features, new Pokemon releases, and overall how players experience Pokemon Go. And if you look at what happened during and after the pandemic, the game's slow death begins to make a little bit more sense. During the pandemic, Niantic made records amounts of money off of Pokemon Go. The reasons? Tons of people came back to the game due to all the exciting changes, and everybody was grinding remote raids. So with all this new money, surely they reinvest most of it back into the cash cow that was Pokemon Go, right? Although they did do that to an extent, it's not where a lot of the money went. Niantic took huge amounts of money they made during the massive resurgence of Pokemon Go during the pandemic and invested it into new projects and initiatives that all either failed or severely underperformed. New games, technology, brands, all I'm sure very exciting for them, but very bad news for Pokemon Go. Once the pandemic ended, they removed all the features that blew Pokemon Go up and made all the money. Then once their new investments failed and their revenue started going down, they fired hundreds of Niantic employees, which has had a very noticeable impact on the game quality. All the new features they've created have been buggy, incomplete, and kind of just boring. Current decisions and game direction just seem severely detached from the community and from what the players actually like and want. They're completely disconnected from their player base, and now seem understaffed and under funded to the point where every single update or release has something wrong with it. Which brings me to the next point, game quality. Ever since the huge layoffs happened, nearly every feature or event has had some aspect of it wrong. Wrong information posted, glitches and bugs, shinies not turned on. Like recently during Mareep Community Day, Niantic accidentally had Squirtle as the featured showcase Pokemon instead of Mareep. And instead of fixing it, they just tweeted saying that's what the showcase was now. Didn't even try. Players now are getting a sort of half-assed version of the game. But it's not all bad. PvP. This is a feature that has constantly seen improvement and development power from Niantic, which is great to see. It also seems like a lot of the PvP members and community are really excited about the game, especially with the new season coming up. And with Pokemon Go PvP being featured in the Pokemon World Championships for two years in a row, interest in the feature is rising. Even still, most players don't really engage with it, and it's been plagued with bugs and problems for years. And I've also said for years that I would engage and play PvP, and I'd do it way more if the system was more entertaining, more exciting, there was like leaderboard, competitive stuff to it. It feels like a lot of potential, kind of like with what Clash Royale has. But honestly, I might get into it because the community for it seems super exciting and super hyped and everyone seems to be having fun over there. But that's the positive stuff, back to the negative stuff. YouTube. Many people won't care about this part, but I swear it's relevant. I've been doing gaming YouTube for 10 years now, and I've noticed a correlation between a game's popularity and the amount of views that the YouTube community gets for it. This is obvious. The more people that are interested in are playing the game, the more people are interested in watching the game. And when looking at the current YouTube community for Pokemon Go, it's also obvious that the game is stale. Creators are burned out and not uploading. There's not many great content ideas to work off of with where the game's at. Videos that are getting the most views right now are information or leak-based and videos across the board from creators are severely underperforming, mine included. Now the big question here is, is Pokemon Go dead? Is the game on an irreversible path to irrelevance? Will anyone even be playing in a year from now? No, I don't think so. It's not, it's not that bad. As I explained earlier, Pokemon Go's popularity has risen and fallen with key features that have kept people engaged or driven people away. And right now, there's nothing really new, exciting, or fun to grind and to grind for, which sucks, but it's not the end of the world. Pokemon Go has been in this position many times over the years, and after enough trial and error, the developers end up finding something that brings the players back to the game and keeps the game exciting for a little bit longer. It's literally their job, and there is hundreds of millions of dollars that flow through Niantic per year to make this happen. At the end of the day, Niantic is a good company and has done a great job with the game. They're just not doing great right now. It's very easy to think that they're the worst company ever when things are bad and the best company ever when things are good, but in reality, they're just a company doing the best they can. So I believe it's only a matter of time before Pokemon Go begins to get fun again and the game comes back. Also, so many people are invested, deeply invested into this game and refuse to give it up and give up their progress, myself included. Pokemon Go is one of the greatest games ever created, with a massive global active audience. And even though it feels a bit stale right now, it doesn't mean it's gonna feel like that forever. But let me know what you think of the state of Pokemon Go down in the comment section below. Also, sorry for just an inherently negative video. That was the vibe today. So, hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one. Take care.